Hello my Ryzen loving friends, today I'm presenting you a comparison I had originally planned to bring you in summer or autumn of 2019. As with many of my planned Ryzen 3000 videos, this one too ended up being not produced in time. But I've decided to now bring this video back to life and finally produce it. It may or may not be that relevant anymore in 2020, especially not since the Ryzen 4000 generation apparently is around the corner, or at least we're supposed to expect it sometime at the end of this year according to the latest rumors. But nonetheless today I will be comparing three generations of AMD Ryzen 7. The following models will go against each other. The AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, the 2700X and the 1700X. I will not name any pricing whatsoever since prices of slightly older hardware obviously tend to be a little unstable to say the least. Aside from that, today's video isn't meant to be some kind of purchase guide whatsoever. It simply is a comparison of how AMD has evolved with Ryzen in the past three years or rather generations. So let's go. Now to get a better picture of all this and to refresh our minds, let's quickly take a look at the specs of these three CPUs. Just like AMD has promised us in the beginning of the Ryzen journey, the then newly introduced socket AM4 would still be in use the next few years. Who knows, we might could get another, if not even two more generations out of the socket. But let's not go too deep into speculations about the new processors. As you can see, all three generations of Ryzen 7 are equipped with 8 cores and 16 threads respectively. Things start with the 1700X at 14 nanometers. With the 2700X we get to see some improvements and get 12 nanometers. The next big jump however we get to see with Ryzen 3000 featuring the 7 nanometer process. The biggest noticeable increase in clock speeds, at least when talking about boost clocks, can be witnessed between the first and second generation. Now technically there would still be the 3800X, but to keep that nice 7 in there all across the board, I decided to stick with the 1700X and 3700X respectively. There was no 2800X after all. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that Ryzen 1000 had serious issues handling memory. There simply were so many issues, it was frustrating at times. Over time though, things started to improve. With the 2000 series the memory situation looked much better already, even though there still were some minor hiccups here and there, but not really worth mentioning. With the third generation, AMD has finally managed to fix the RAM compatibility issue completely, more or less. Sure, their memory controller still isn't as stable as seen on Intel CPUs, but still, memory stability or compatibility issues have become fairly rare now. A lot has improved on the cache side of things too. The level 3 cache coming from the second to third generation has doubled. Instead of 16 megabytes, we now get 32. But enough of the history lesson, you guys most likely simply want to see the benchmarks. So I'm not holding you back any longer. All was tested in combination with the same memory kit, running at 3200 MHz and with an RTX 2080 Ti graphics card.
Oh boy, what can I say? AMD has really improved with their 3000 series. Aside from the sheer amount of RAM stability issues and rather low frame rates in games, with the Ryzen 7 1700X, the first generation still managed to greatly impress the PC world. For standards back then, three years ago that is. The results turned out to be fairly consistent, whether we are talking of multi-core tests or game tests. There certainly are noticeable performance gains from one generation to another. The biggest, most noticeable gains can be seen between first and second gen Ryzen, so between the 1700X and 2700X. Combined with an RTX 2080 Ti, we do see, however, how much such a Ryzen CPU back from 2017 holds us back in games, despite coming with 8 cores and 16 threads. Especially those 1% lows, the minimums shouldn't go unnoticed there. The average frame rate doesn't tell the whole story when it comes to smooth gameplay. Nevertheless, all in all, the 1700X no doubt still delivers a perfectly playable experience. This is not today's point, just to set the record straight. If you were to pair such a CPU with a not quite as powerful of a graphics card as a 2080 Ti, the gap between those three CPUs would get smaller, of course. A bit strange, however, are those Red Dead Redemption 2 results I got, where the Ryzen 2700X manages to somehow get on top of the newer 3700X. I've retested a couple of times, tried different drivers, BIOS versions, etc., but the result remained the same. So this is a bit weird, which is why I wanted to point it out to you guys. Ryzen 3000 with the 3700X has breathed new life into the CPU world. The first time for a long, long time, we finally get the feeling that even in games, AMD can now finally compete with Intel. Needless to say, the multicore crown goes to AMD anyway, something that makes content creators such as myself quite happy, but of course you, at least most of you, probably don't care about multicore that much. At least that's what many of you guys keep saying in the comments. With the Ryzen 3700X, for the first time it now feels like we get a matured product from AMD. While there were some incidents of the stated boost clocks not being achievable at all times, honestly, that hardly affected performance or stability anyway. With the exact same cooling solution, a 240mm AIO liquid cooler by Deepcool, it's obvious the CPUs start to run hotter from generation to generation, and overclocking potential is close to non-existent with Ryzen 3000. Not that Ryzen ever was much of a overclocker's fever dream anyway, but Ryzen 3000 seems to hardly overclock any further than stock, so AMD probably already squeezed the most out of their chips. Despite getting a decent performance gain over the previous generation, the 3700X does even consume slightly less power. And yeah, that's about all I can really say here. It was a bumpy road for AMD with Ryzen, but with each generation they put out, the problems of the previous generation got fixed more or less. Now let's hope Intel manages to pull off something similar for us consumers. Competition is what makes the CPU world exciting and it also keeps prices somewhat reasonable. With that being said, it's time to say goodbye for me and I'll see you in the next one.